automatic engine stop start systems, a massive automotive con. And what about shutting down your engine manually instead of just idling in an older car? Should you bother and how much will you actually save? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where yeah, new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. I get three or four of these comments every week, all from the same source, from dickheads such as this. Watch Engineering Explained Channel's video that runs the actual math on this topic. You'll find actual science completely contradicts the shit you hear spewing from this dissertation. There is nothing I enjoy more than a frank and honest assessment of my work. And have you ever noticed the correlation between fake name commenters and functional illiteracy? It's very high indeed. Engineering Explained, okay? I really enjoy Jason Fenske's channel. It's called Engineering Explained. You should check it out. Excellent stuff. I've watched dozens of his reports. He's a very successful YouTuber and he deserves to be. He tackles hardcore engineering topics and he makes them eminently digestible for mainstream automotive enthusiasts. But on the 5th of September last year, Jason put up a video called Americans have no idea how much fuel idling uses, which should be part of a much broader series in my view. Americans have no idea how to elect the right president. Americans have no idea how to avoid going to war. Americans have no idea how to stop shooting each other. Topics like that. We could put the entire series together one morning. Michael Moore could host it or possibly even Penn and Teller. I'd watch that. Anyway, here is Jason's salient conclusion from that report on shutting down and restarting your engine instead of just sitting there idling. So if this engine is idling or a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine is idling for seven seconds, if it's gonna idle for any longer, it's more beneficial to simply shut it off and then restart it once traffic is moving again. Jason referenced a 14 year old study in the SAE for much of that data and the mathematics is absolutely on the money. But I respectfully suggest that he is sending the wrong message out there to the world overall. It's profoundly wrong, and here is why. Basically, it would be easy to watch that report, and I'll put a link just up there if you're watching on a desktop, on a mobile or a tablet, who knows. You might infer, though, that it is a good idea from that report to shut your engine down if you look like being stopped for any longer than seven seconds because you are quote unquote wasting fuel. Beyond that point, according to Mr. Fensky, it's just a waste. This is synonymous in most people's minds, of course, with wasting money. And he talks about it in terms of being quote, beneficial, which is a big unequivocal call and my main point of disagreement with him on this. I'd suggest that drawing this conclusion about seven seconds being the go, no go, beneficial threshold for shutting down is simply bullshit. Unwitting bullshit, but I'm using Professor Harry G. Frankfurt's definition of that term. And this is not my opinion. I'm using research and data from Argonne National Laboratories in Illinois, one of the US's premier engineering research centers. You've heard of the Manhattan Project, right? It was a big win for our team back in August of 1945. It was on all the front pages of all the papers. Argonne was closely associated with the Manhattan Project. In fact, it was born from that project. In April 2015, the dudes at Argonne published a report with the catchy title, Stop and Restart Effects on Modern Vehicle Starting System Components, Longevity and Economic Factors. Miracle cure for insomnia right there for many people, I'd suggest, but not you and not me, that's for sure. It was scientifically robust and they conscripted the technical input from six automakers plus Denso and Johnson Controls, the SAE and Oak Ridge National Laboratory. It's kind of the works burger of engineering intellectual grunt on this issue. And I'll put a link to that report in the description. You can download it as a PDF. 
It's 20 pages of really heavy going, a full economic analysis of the potential cost implications of choosing to manually shut down your engine in traffic as opposed to idling it. A minimum shutdown duration of approximately one minute for six or fewer additional starts per day results in economic savings due to a reduction in idling fuel cost. This is a hardcore academic analysis, which basically took all the technical factors into account like starter and battery design life, and they corrected the fuel saving with the fuel used on restart, the wear effects on starter motors, the battery life implications of more frequent restarts, and potential additional charge depletion of the battery in that restarted state, etc. And they did it for a projected 10 year period of the vehicle's life. So this is a serious undertaking. What they found was that if you manually shut down and restart often, like 12 to 20 times a day, and if the shutdown duration is short, like less than two or three minutes, then doing this will actually cost you money. If you shut down fewer times, like maybe six or eight times a day, for more than about five minutes per shutdown, then you will save money. But in either case, and here's the kicker, the amount you either save or it costs you is completely trivial, at least in the context of household budgets. You can measure it, it just doesn't matter. The maximum possible saving for a two litre engine is 400 US dollars over 10 years. And to do that, you need to be shut down for eight or nine minutes at a time. And you will save 11 cents a day US. The worst case scenario, two litre engine, 18 to 20 restarts a day, each for only a minute or two. That's going to cost you an additional 600 US dollars in accelerated battery death and starter wear. And you might call that a cost of 16 cents a day. What this is showing is that if your car is shut off for longer than seven seconds, then it could be beneficial. That's Jason talking about seven seconds, a pretty loose definition of beneficial in my view. I'd suggest that there's no other domain in human life where people would devote any attention span at all to the benefit or otherwise of an activity that will impact their lives between plus 11 and minus 16 cents per day. The concept of spending time on this is absurd. And remember that none of this is my opinion. It is the most robust academic study on this available, at least that I could find. And it's also current. It focused on manually shutting your engine down, not auto stop start systems. So I'll make a few observations on those right now. Number one, okay. Auto stop start technology is not free. If you buy the car, they are amortizing the cost of installing it in your car and you are paying. Number two, Argon Labs found in 2015 that a modern two liter engine consumed about 600 milliliters of fuel per hour at idle. At $1.50 a liter in Schittsvillian micro pesos, that's 90 cents an hour or 1.5 cents per minute to idle a modern two litre car. So that's the maximum you could ever save, 1.5 cents per minute. Number three, these systems are not without additional long-term operating costs. For example, I get one or two people bitching to me every week about this. A replacement 12 volt battery for a Mazda with iStop is about 500 bucks. A normal battery for a similar car without iStop is about 150. The difference is $350. And at 90 cents per hour, the cost of idling, that's about 390 hours in which the car must be shut down. And that is just to break even on the cost of this battery, the premium. Assuming a design life of five years on the battery, again, that's not just me pulling some number out of my ass. It's what Johnson Controls told Argon Labs the average design life of a battery is. Assuming you get that five years from the battery, 390 hours divided by five is 78 hours a year, 90 minutes a week. 
That is on average 13 minutes per day, every day with the engine completely shut down. You have to do that in traffic just to offset the additional cost of replacing the bullshit iStop battery in five years time. And good luck with that, especially if you are a short distance driver. 13 minutes a day for five years, just to start saving a maximum of 1.5 cents a minute. I mean, call me ungrateful, but that really is an emphatically shit economic deal. According to Ausstats, the average passenger vehicle in Australia drives 13,100 kilometres annually. That's 36 k's a day on average. So only a very small proportion of drivers is going to experience 13 minutes of auto engine shutdown per day, I'd suggest. And that's the point at which you're just not losing any money thanks to the premium you need to pay for iStop's absurd battery. At an average speed of 30 kilometres per hour in reasonably dense traffic, that's an hour and 12 minutes behind the wheel, and you need to be stopped for at least 18% of that time. And remember, the system restarts automatically to run the HVAC and to avoid profound battery depletion. So if you've got the aircon cranked and the headlights on, then good luck with achieving 13 minutes of iStop shutdown per day. Engineering Explained referenced the SAE real-world tests of auto stop start in cities, which found a saving of between 4 and 8.7%, which sounds great on fuel, but really, it's trivial on cost. For average vehicles in Australia, that's a saving of between 22 and 49 cents per day, without compensating for the premium cost of replacement of things like the iStop battery. Pro tip here, okay? 22 cents a day is only just enough money to recoup the cost premium of the beefier battery, which is costing you 19 cents a day, whether you use the damn car or not. Point number four, okay? There's a downside to auto stop start. It's unrefined just to kick off. And at times when you want or need to get off the line quickly, such as when turning right in Chitsville or left in Retardistan into smallish gaps across the flow of oncoming traffic, the restart is often too slow and you can burn precious time sitting there waiting for the engine to catch up with your foot on the gas and nothing happening. And that kind of sucks. I therefore hate these systems, but my feeling about them is informed by reason and not just pure emotion. From the point of view of return on investment, with auto start stop, the cost is way too high in terms of poor refinement and slow response, and the benefits really do not add up, except possibly for a minuscule proportion of high mileage drivers who are trapped in dense city traffic, like taxis. So, Jason, as much as I sincerely respect and admire the good work you do generally on Engineering Explained, it seems to me that your enthusiasm for fuel saving has clouded your judgment and or blinded you to the real costs of actually having the engine shut down in traffic. That is, both manually shut down in an older car or automatically in a newer one. And frankly, there's a weight, a heavy weight of robust academic research to support this conclusion. It's just not beneficial at all to a great many drivers. In fact, those automatic engine shutdown and restart control systems exist only for car makers to derive incremental gains in the official fuel economy laboratory tests and also to help them meet regulatory CO2 emission limitations imposed upon their fleets by governments. They are of minimal to no tangible benefit to actual car owners, and in many cases they can be a financial liability, albeit a small one especially for a low mileage driver who will never hope to recoup the cost of that beefy battery. For the average car owner, auto engine shutdown and restart is simply a fraud, whether it's DIY or the engine does it for you. And there are plenty of far more effective ways to save money on fuel. <laughs> 